there's also thanks Mayuka and then you can also just put some um some links to some uh discounted deals for Christmas uh in the in the chat uh, in the stage chat as well great opportunity to take advantage of some um world class uh training in uh APIs mod uh, API uh, strategy models now we've got Emmanuel coming up uh on deck from IBM uh joining us to discuss from project to reality. Cool. Hey, Mark. Hey, how are you going? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Great to have you here with us. Uh, are you able to share your slide deck? I'm going to try. You got fingers crossed. Yeah. So we've Looks got like um, some- a few times lately with this. Uh, yeah. There's, I think there's a lot of, I think it's just a lot of use of the, um, uh of hopping around the world and yeah with our with our numbers of the audience as well great i think you're almost set Just heading to presentation mode okay perfect i'll jump off thanks very much looking forward to hearing you all right well uh thank you thank you very much mark and uh thank you very very much everyone for for attending this session um you know i, I know that we we are arriving towards the end of the uh the conference, so I do hope you had a good one. Um, you know, at IBM, we we, uh, we are a great fan of uh, API days. Uh, we've been uh, sponsoring and participating to many of them around the world for many years now. And uh, really one of the reasons why we think it's a, it's a great conference is because it really does bring together both uh, technical uh, focused uh, uh, people as well as uh, people that have much more of a, a business uh, uh, direct business objective into into their job description and in fact i think that is possible simply because uh, you know apis are, are all about that are really about uh, uh, bringing it and, and business together together to to deliver uh, superior uh, client experience so uh, i hope you you, you had a, a good moment for these uh, three days so what are we going to to look at and i was really interested by, by the, the, the former presentation, because there are obviously a lot of similarities between our message and, and what was shared there. And what I wanted to do today is really to, to go through a mix of uh, uh, approaches to, to deploy uh, API project, as well as uh, give you, giving you some examples of what uh, uh, some of our clients are doing uh, and trying to cover some, some uh, diverse industries. Um, you know, uh, here I'm kind of a, I'm preaching a, a, a group of convinced, convict. Uh, I'm sure um, you know uh, APIs are, are the glue between the data and the application, and what we're trying to do uh, uh, to, to deliver uh, superior client uh, experiences. Uh, you know, uh, APIs are kind of uh, exploded over the five, five, past five years, and um, and it is something that is really kind of fueling the digital transformation as we know it. And, and when we look at, at APIs, uh, uh, no matter how, how we look into it and, and, and what, what they, they, they are meant to do, you know, there is one thing that comes back all the time, which is speed. And speed is really of the essence here. And I'm not so much talking about uh, 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 performance and, and performance of an application. What I'm talking about is really uh, agility and the reactivity uh, to, 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 uh, 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 to be able to respond to your business need. Uh, that business did being brand new or being simply a kind of a change into what, what was needed before and after. And, and you know, we all went through this uh, year 2020 that will remain in history as a, as a, as a, a different year, to put it that way. And, and you know that all of our organizations had to adapt very, very fast. And uh, I'm not, you know, I can mention this kind of a click and collect and the fact that people started to buy uh, uh, things remotely much more than before you know the fact that we had to work from home the fact that so you know many things like it so so we had to adapt and and apis are all about uh, this kind of way to, to adapt very fast to, to, to a changing world and speed and being agile is one thing but 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 it is not easy and uh, that is why uh, we you know there's a lot of surveys that show that Usually, when we try to to integrate applications, because you know when you look at an API, there's a lot of integration that is happening in the background. You know these kind of a, a application pro, uh, uh, projects are, are more often than not failing because it's hard. 
it, it, it's really hard to to bring together uh, applications that live in a public uh, in, in a public uh, uh, cloud in a private cloud in a mainframe uh, uh, and so on and so forth and and that is why you know embarking uh, into an api project and really looking at uh, the uh, the agility is a good thing but we need to look at what's happening behind and and is not something that is always easy to do and that is why one of the things we say is uh, we have to be prepared to fail and to fail fast and um, uh, that's also the reason why i relate to what was said in the presentation before is uh, here we are really referring to uh, agile methodology and this idea of iteration okay so when you look at the kind of the four pillars of um, uh, of uh, a project uh, uh, an api project life cycle you know the two ones that really uh, we're looking at here of course uh, beyond the creation and, the, and and securing your api is that you need to have the ability to understand what is going on with your api making sure that you know uh, 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 which functionalities are being used, uh, uh, which functionality are not being used, or, or, or simply that an API that is catching like fire and that is being used a lot, and another one that you thought would be a success that, that suddenly is not. So you need to have the, to, to monitor, that, monitor that carefully and have the tools to, uh, 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 to help you making the decision and be prepared to uh, uh, create uh, new releases of, of that application. And the last, the last uh, pillar of these kind of uh, uh, four pillars is uh, uh, socialization. When you, when you deploy a, a, an API, you need to think about it like a, uh, like a product, okay? So uh, like any, any product, you're gonna commercialize that and you can develop or deploy the best product in the world. But if nobody knows about it and if nobody can, can reflect and, 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 and use it properly, if, it, if it's not easy to use, if it, if it is not uh, well documented, uh, then even if it's the best API or product in the world, nobody will use that. So that's why I think we overlooked a lot at the beginning of, uh, of these APIs, this aspect of uh, 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 socializing uh, the APIs, you know, making groups, making sure that there were forums ar around that and, and simply with a view to make it known and used. Uh, uh, if you don't, do not do that, I think you, you, you're missing a big, a big point and you, you may as well have one of the best API in the world that nobody will use. So th those are the things. So fail fast is kind of a, a very important point. So those of you who've seen us in, in all these conferences are probably very uh, used to this kind of full categorization of uh, you know, industry use cases. And, uh, and a lot of our, my colleagues have, have presented that. Uh, and you know you're used to them, but in fact they are still true, uh, and that's why we we keep on uh, bringing them. Um, but what is interesting is uh, we see our clients really going from my, the left hand side from uh, uh, building uh, APIs to uh, accelerate the application development, which is kind of a very noble uh, aspect. You know, developing using APIs to compose your application and not to have to reinvent the wheel. So speed is is very important, of course. Uh, 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 you have clients who are uh, deploying an API simply because they needed a, a way and a mean to, to secure the data that they want to expose. And, and APIs and the gateways that go with it can, are a very good way to do that. And when I was saying that we see our clients that maybe two or three years ago were a lot about speed of, speed of application development, now we see most of our clients having use cases that are related to developing their, their ecosystem. Okay, so making sure that their APIs are used by a, a, a broad uh, a set of developers, but also uh, more and more uh, uh, business partners in order to, to develop the, the business. And, and you'll see in the, the few cases that I will be uh, sharing here that, um, uh, that a lot of the cases are about that. And of course, we, we still have, you know, the, the kind of uh, holy grail, which is, uh, 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 APIs to, to 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 build a new business model, and um, uh, th there is one industry that has always been at the forefront of innovation, uh, which was uh, uh, the finance and the banking. And uh, we, you you've heard uh, the, the 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 terminology of uh, open banking 1.0 and open banking 2.0, and and really banking is a is a, a typical industry that really is now using APIs to 
to, to change their, their business. The, the whole industry is changing very, very fast. And API has been you know, one of the trigger for making it happening. And we're going to have a look at that. So keep these kind of four categories in mind, because I think, firstly, when you look at the use cases that you, you may want to, to, to deploy or, or, or to, 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 to have for, for your APIs, you'll see that it's kind of fairly easy to categorize them in, in one or two of these categories, but you see that that kind of really encompasses all the situations you're going to have. So to give you some examples and really kind of, uh, uh, they're fairly, fairly random and we'll, we'll go uh, into others, but kind of a first set of them, uh, taking some very uh, standard industry, I'd say, you know, nothing hugely innovative, but Royal Mail is, is, a, is, is a good um, example of a uh, of a company that 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 is in an industry that you know had to change radically uh you know la poste in france real mail uh, and you know all the 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 poste italiana and you know all, all these similar similar uh, companies in in each country are going through you know massive changes and uh, and and they're really fighting to to remain relevant and um, you know royal mail uh, like others they, they realize that of course uh, they had a huge assets and assets that were uh, uh, that, that could be relevant as long as they could be used by as many partners as possible. So when you look at the the, the APIs that they have developed, you know they, they can they can seem like being very basic. Uh, you, you know the API that based on the postcode that will give you all the collection points uh, from the Royal Mail that you will have in that area. You know that's a kind of a basic idea. You know the other one that track and trace. A delivery parcel is is a basic one as well. It's not so simple actually to implement, but once you have it, the idea can 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 be seen uh, uh, obvious. However, the challenge was uh, uh, how to 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 make to in the past before they had APIs. The challenge are how to make these kind of uh, applications integrated with what their business partner were doing. And now that they have developed these APIs, it becomes extremely easy for their business partners to reuse those services and to embed that into, into what they're doing. So I really encourage you to have a look at the Royal Mail developer portal. Uh, if you Google that, you'll find it very easily and you'll see a kind of very well done, a very simple, uh, uh, but with a, with a great design uh, uh, um, a portal, develop, developer portal, where you will see these APIs. So you see that, you know, uh, maybe from some uh, ideas and use cases that are fairly simple, the value of the API is, is really in making uh, these, this kind of link between the application and what, what, what you need to do. The second one is uh, at the bottom is a, is, a, uh, is a retailer, it's a supermarket chain. And, and these guys, they really wanted uh, uh, their franchises to become autonomous. They really wanted to, 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 to foster that idea of, uh, of entrepreneurship into, into the franchises. So the only thing they had to do was to make sure that, that the franchises get access to, to the catalog and to the stock levels. And I was, at the beginning, at least as simple as that. And as soon as they, they could deploy those APIs and make them available for the franchises, then they really could push uh, uh, the franchises to, to, to really uh, develop their business based on the countries that they, they were out based on, on the kind of a local needs they have and, and really develop application that would uh, really reuse the stock uh, and and the um, uh, the catalog of of the the, the, the main company. Uh, now, you've got very small organization, and here actually we're talking about fairly fairly sizable, but even even bigger. Looking at this uh, railway uh, organization, and and these guys, what they did was they they had different line of business uh, that worked with many many different uh, uh, developers, clients, and and uh, and partners, of course. And, and their, their target for uh, developing APIs was really to have a kind of a Uber API hub uh, that would make sure that uh, each division could have a, uh, a, a cross line of, of, of business uh, um, uh, API portal and making sure that uh, for any application that would be uh, developed internally and, uh, and externally, uh, they would use, uh, they, they, there would be a lot of consistency. So here it was really about bringing some governance and bringing some uh, um, a sense of kind of unity uh, between all the line of business. And here we're talking about APIs that are simple as, uh, again, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, train timetables, but also about more technical APIs like uh, two-factor authentication uh, that, that had to be used by, by everyone. And I kept the, the last one here, like for 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 uh, for, for, for last uh, the the open banking one, and it's a little bit of the elephant in the room. So you, you are uh, most of you, I think, are aware that um, uh, the banks were really at the forefront of innovation when it comes to API. Uh, and especially in Europe, because of uh, a uh, European regulation called PSD2 that was imposed on the bank. And that regulation really uh, uh, mandated uh, for every bank who wanted to do business in Europe to, to uh, deploy the APIs uh, with the data of their clients and, of course, uh, with uh, their client consent. And that have for, has forced really every bank to have to put these APIs together to get used to the technology and, and to, to make these data available. So that was the kind of a first stage, which was really about uh, uh, the, 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 the legislation pushing them to do that. And now we are really embarking into this open banking level two or 2.0, where they have the tools, they have the data, they understand the technology, and now it's about you know, doing more with that. So there are third party uh, uh, providers, uh, you've got fintechs, uh, the bank themselves are really trying to 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 push uh, and to uh, and to redefine the way they do their business. So if you look at you know one one of the first uh, application that that seem again you know I will use that term a lot basic but but you know you see how simple things can change the life of of, of many organizations and the way we do business. Uh, one of the first application of PSD two was that ability for the banks. In a, in a single application to aggregate uh, for one client uh, the data coming from all different banks. So here you see Barclays uh, saying that uh, uh, it is possible for you to view all the accounts from all the different banks. So here, uh, Emily, in that example, in that application, she may be a, a client of uh, RBS, uh, Barclays, of course, but also uh, uh, Lloyd's TSB. And within that application, she can bring uh, everything into one place. And, and I believe that you've all seen that with your bank. The implication is, is pretty serious because if I aggregate all my data into the Barclays bank, you know, the bank as an end user, the bank I'm going to talk to is Barclays. I will kind of start stopping talking about the other guys, uh, uh, to the other guys. And Barclays is the one who are going to, to provide me new services around all these kind of panorama of information they have about me. So Barclays, they gain a, 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 a client that they really have a strong relationship with, and the other banks are kind of losing that relationship. So you see the kind of importance of something, something fairly fairly basic. Um, and of course, you know, there, there were many other uh, applications to, to, to PSD2. But looking at uh, the, the version 2.0, uh, and giving you an example of uh, BBVA here. Uh, what BBVA did, you know, once they had these uh, uh, regulatory uh, APIs up, uh, they kind of really, uh, in some instances, and here we're talking about uh, uh, an example in, 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 in Mexico, where BBVA and Uber kind of uh, fostered a partnership where uh, Uber is now uh, able to uh, uh, get his, uh, its drivers and even the family of these drivers uh, to create a digital account uh, and to and to get in a matter of minutes kind of a, a debit card uh, for, for for their own usage. So the end user is interacting with Uber. Uber is providing that service, which is powered by the APIs coming from BBVA in the background. So you see, you know how uh, you know a, a set of few simple APIs is really kind of fostering and triggering uh, uh, new ideas uh, uh, in the background. So changing gear a little bit, uh, once you once uh, you, you're really trying to 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 put these uh, API products out and uh, and really make them known, uh, I said that the fourth pillar of the API lifecycle is was really about uh, 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 socialization of your APIs and and creating communities. So here you've got a very interesting example of a. Um, uh, of a developer portal for uh, the EDP, which is the Portuguese electric uh, 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 company, and um, uh, they are. You see that on the on the welcome page, they are very much onto 
virtual communities and and uh, and if you uh, drive down a little bit you see that the the, the different uh, uh, access to the communities they give you uh, ideas of uh, use cases and they call the success cases uh, and and also uh, a lot of data and articles and they will really uh, uh, encourage uh, the different uh, uh, developers to share experiences about the APIs and try to make sure that everyone uh, uh, really uh, um, uh, collaborate when it comes to uh, uh, telling which which is a good API, which is a bad one. You know, in what what context context uh, one was used and what was not used. So you see that this becomes a very important uh, a part of any uh, uh, developer portal. I mentioned the Royal. Uh, the Royal Mail, you've seen the, the, the BBVAs, and if you type any company dot developer portal, you, you're pretty going to see that, and you see how important that is. Again, because API have to be seen as a uh, as a product, and then of course uh, you access the product catalog, and here you see uh, you know, the variety of uh, of products or APIs uh, that that are made available uh, uh, through that EDP, which will be the case for every every dev developer portal. So, pausing for a second, um, de de deploying and developing uh, APIs uh, is really a, a fine balance between the need to get something out into the market fast, you know, this kind of MVP, minimum viable product and, and iteration. But at the same time, you need to find a balance at some point uh, when, when you start to have more than one API, you need to find a balance with consistency with the reuse and the control. And when you, you start to try to find this balance, you know, pre pretty quickly, uh, you, you start to see the, the idea of the concept of a center of excellence lurking in the background. But, you know, the message is not to rush things maybe. Uh, uh, first, you know, we do understand that um, uh, more often than not, APIs are a, a, an IT-led uh, 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 initiative and we have, uh, defined uh, the five levels uh, levels of maturity that really uh, uh, take you from something that is IT led, where you need to to understand and master the technology before uh, uh, before the um, the business get involved. But the reality is that the qu the quicker uh, the quicker you 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 your your APR project becomes a partnership between IT and the business, uh, the quicker. You're going to 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 extract value out of your APIs. Uh, you know, there, there's a good um, one of, of our colleagues that most of you know. I'm sure Alan Glickenhaus was making the the parallel between um, uh, 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 web web uh, websites and, and these APIs. You know, the websites like what was it 20 years ago? Uh, at the beginning, they were IT projects, and and IT was kind of deciding the look and feel of of the the, the web the web pages, and they were kind of dictating a little bit what we were gonna, what we were going to put in there. But think of your website now. Uh, websites are, are are kind of business driven initiatives, and they are the marketing is uh, has a big say on, on what we're going to put in there. So they, they really become a a channel a channel for uh, 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 making business and a channel to market. So. Once you 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 to that level where the business and IT work together, and once you have really uh, uh, defined that your your APIs uh, uh, or a set of your APIs is becoming a channel to market, then uh, you really are, are ready to look at uh, the opportunity to to uh, to implement a, a center of excellence. Of course. Um, uh, so, you know, organizations try to be a little bit careful when it comes to center of excellence because they, they, they really don't, don't, don't want it to disrupt too much their current organization. And, um, and, and the few questions that I guess that they have to ask themselves is, you know, how independent are my different line of business? Uh, is, do I have an IT dedicated for each line of business or do I have a, 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 an IT that is centralized? And, and I think, you know, answering these kind of questions will help shaping uh, 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 the type of CEO you need. Here in this kind of page, you see uh, uh, you see kind of a, a proposed or a typical, I'm not sure even how to call it, but, you know, one possible center of excellence. And you see the kind of the key uh, uh, profiles that you need into that. You need to have 
a somebody who owns the initiative and that will be a business person uh, then you need a kind of a product manager somebody who's kind of business focused and and again you know who look at the apis uh, as a product and try really to make sure and understand what is the business need that you that 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 the apis bring and of course that box in the middle needs to have the right level of it support with operation that will deal with the security teams and api developers who will then work with the integration architect because you remember you know an api is not a kind of a floating thing in the background you you, you sometimes and often actually have a pretty big integration project so that might be where that might be where we have to wrap up i'm afraid and then well um we're we're heading over into um the next speaker's time the okay. But yeah, I mean, it's so many, so many fascinating insights. How can people follow up? Have you got a slide? Oh, can you let people know in the um, stage chat how to follow up with you? There's a ton of great industry examples. It'd be wonderful to keep the conversation going. So if you're able to add in the stage chat, um, and my apologies for having to ask you to step off. No, 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 no. I, I just went over a little bit. We can, we, we can, we can, I know we had, <laughs> there was yeah, so we'll, much, we'll, yeah. we can yeah. keep, keep going. <laughs> okay, wonderful. And thanks, Emmanuel has put his, um, uh, his emails there. So please reach out and get a copy of the slide deck and also uh, keep that conversation going. Um, I'll ask Emmanuel now to leave the stage as we